Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch and today we're going to be looking at exporting from Blender to Unreal, Unity, and Godot using three different add-ons that are all available as part of the Blender Markets Essential Game Modding Toolkit. Now this actually released almost a month back. I asked you guys which ones you are most interested in me going hands-on with. The overwhelming answers were Retopo Flow and then today's subjects Blender to Unity, Blender to Unreal, and Blender to Godot for Pipeline add-ons. So what we're going to do is go hands-on with these three. If you're interested, this bundle is going to be done by this is uploaded probably showing one day left but it's going to get an extension it's going to be available for at least one more week if you're interested in picking it up and picking it up you probably should if you are a blender user because this one is a banger of a bundle you're getting retopo flow fbx better importer bake master a number of different assets game rig tools quick baker rig uv flow face it uh, a bunch more stuff, UV Pack Master, and then the three that we are looking at today. Some really great things in this bundle. One thing to be aware of, though, you are getting a snapshot in time version, uh, so you may not get updates going forward. Definitely one of those things to be aware of. Although, when it comes to this one, uh, I'm going to show you uh, how you can get updates to it, and also uh, you will notice Retopo Flow. I did a video on that one hands on, and it has a built in updater. So, in some cases, not getting the newest versions probably shouldn't be a big deal, but definitely one of those things you want to be aware of with this bundle. So without further ado, let's go hand on with Blender to Unity, Blender to Unreal, and Blender to Godot for Pipeline. And that involves us going over to Blender, and of course, we sacrifice a default cube because, hey, we have to. So here, you're gonna notice I've already installed these. Uh, so Blender to Unity, Unreal, and Godot Pipeline. Just basically download the uh, associated zip file, uh, download that zip, extract it out, and you're gonna notice inside of it, there is another zip file. Just come on in here, install it, and then enable it, and then you're good to go. So here we are, we can do things like file, okay, no, we're already here, add mesh monkey. So here is the object that we are going to export out to our game engine, and you're gonna to notice tools menu, so I hit the N key, and we have a Unity and an Unreal tab. I'm gonna deal with the Godot in just a second, so I'm gonna focus on Unity and Unreal exporter, because they're from the same creator, and you're gonna notice they are very, very similar in the way they work. Now Unity has a couple, so Unreal Engine has a couple of different options here. One is vehicle rigging, which is completely undocumented, and I have no idea how it works. The other one is sockets, which basically just allows you to define a socket, which is a position in space, like a pivot point, where you could do something like a sword mounts at this location or something. So if you wanted to find that, you can define that for them. You can see right there, I just created one uh, like that. It's very simple to set them up, uh, but that is not available in the Unity side of things. But you're going to notice on the Unity side of things, you have the ability to pick the pipeline to create your materials for. So a bit of one and then a little bit different on the other one. But for the most part, the functionality between these two things is the same. First thing we're going to showcase is the collider. Now the collider gives you the ability to set up, well, colliders. So example here with my object selected, I go ahead and create, okay, there's a box collider. It's going to create the shortest box to fit around said object. Now I could also do this as um, a convex hull and there's different algorithms for actually how to figure this out. And this is going to create the tightest uh, convex hull that it can for our particular shape like this. And then you're going to notice if I turn that off, it's created this convex hull. Uh, so a, um, uh, performance friendly but good detailed uh, collider for physics simulations are being created. Now for this one I'm going to stick with the uh, just the box collider to create things nice and simple. Sacrifice, oops, uh, sacrifice another key, come back here, mesh, and create our monkey once again. So again, end key, unity like so, and collider. We're just going to go ahead and create a box collider like that. So if you want to create a collider, it's that simple. I will create multiple colliders by just clicking here and adding more, and you're gonna see they get added down here in the collider category. Now, the next thing you could do is create LODs. So I come down here and I say, okay, add an LOD, and this is gonna be a 50% LOD, and I can do another one here, and we'll do this one at uh, 25%. So this is gonna automatically create lower resolution versions of our object for use in the game engine. Uh, once you've got all the LODs set up that you wish, you just go ahead and create, and you're gonna notice, boom, it just created your two LODs to go with it as well. Uh, and then finally, you've got the ability down here, set up the shader, so you can do a specular setup, standard setup, HDRP, we're gonna stick with standard here. Uh, let's create a material, just boom, and let's just go ahead and create a red material, like so. So we got this orangey red material for our object, uh, now define, we have our box collider here as well. Uh, and uh, I think we're probably good to go. So we have Susan selected over here. And the final thing you got to do is tell it where to export it out. So you see over here, you get this plus key and pick a location. Now I've got a project open over here. Uh, what I'm going to do is just basically show that in Explorer, find the location for this one, and then come on back over here. 
we will go to that location, go to the assets directory and add that as our export folder. Now, when you're exporting something out of either one of these systems, you can either do it as collections, which is a cool feature. This was actually just added in 4.2. So you can export out like an entire collection of things with nested sub collections available here as well. Or you can select an object. We're going to stick with the object here. So Susan is selected. Uh, we've got it picked out the location of our project and standard material. We're going to bake the material. So we're going to get uh, our created material out. We're going to go ahead and export it. See the exporting process just happened right there. And let's head on back over here. And now you'll notice there is our object. Let's go ahead and create one in the world there. So you can see here we have our multiple LODs. We have our LOD manager here like so. And then we have our collision shape defined around the outside as well. And I think that's actually an LOD zero. So our collider is here. Let's turn that off so we can see our object. So there you can see three different LODs are created like this. And then of course we got our top level here and we've got our LOD manager all set up and ready to go. Very, so let's jump between. Now I don't know why LOD one is the only one that got the texture here. It might be a little bit of setup work left to do there. But you can see here, it creates it for you, brings the materials across. Uh, and then if you make a change over here, it will automatically update over there. So for example, here, I come back here and say, all right, I want another LOD and this one is gonna be 10%. All right, here, we'll create it. Boom, it's there. We'll export Susan out. We flip back over here and you can see, boom, we have a third LOD. So it does make your, and you're gonna see very low poly mesh at this point in time, by the way. So. That is what it is doing for you. Uh, it's a very um, handy workflow. Again, if you're doing LOD creations, if you're doing collision mesh creations inside of Blender and exporting it out over to Unreal or Unity, that is what this one is all about. Kind of gives you the gist of what it's capable of. Uh, and then on top of that, so again, uh, same basic settings here. Uh, for working with Unreal Engine. Uh, again, you can use collections or objects available here as well. Another thing to be aware of here is this little gear icon. So you click that guy. Uh, there's one of these available for both of them. So this one, uh, this is the Unreal Engine. So you got various different ways that the FBX file is going to be created. And then here you can see you can do things like set up the naming and prefixes that are being created. So for an animation, it's gonna get the A prefix, T for texture, material is M, static mesh is SM, as is pretty much the standards. Uh, you also have a set of uh, settings available here for the, um, the Unity one as well. Kind of a similar setup again. Uh, no name preferences here. So it's gonna be specific to the actual version you're working with. And you can have how the FBX is ultimately created. And once again, you also have the ability, you can set up to go uh, to multiple different locations if you wish to do so. So here it's not gonna make any sense, but you can have it export out. You can have it like an FBX folder and into your game project if you wish. So that in a nutshell is the way the Unity and Unreal Engine export add-ons work. Now uh, they just kind of make your workflows a little bit handier. And now let's move on to the Godot side of the equation. Now, Godot is actually kind of a bit of a two-sided process. So again, let's go back here, general, let's not save that. So edit, preferences, once again, add-ons, uh, and come down here, you're gonna notice we have the Godot pipeline enabled right here. No settings for it. It's basically there or it's not. Uh, and once that is set up, so again, sacrifice default cube, and let's create us another monkey. All right, so here, properties, Godot pipeline is available over here. Now this one works a little bit different. The first thing you're gonna do is actually export your project over to the other location so that you've got a consistent name across paths. So you kind of come over to, uh, let's see, Godot engine right here. Let's create a new project. So, uh, Godot demo, let's create the folder. No, I guess I created that folder already. Uh, let's go ahead and do a none and create an edit. So here we are on the Godot side of the equation and you've got a hookup on the Godot side and you've also got the, the setups on the uh, Blender side of things. Uh, Blender is already installed. Here, what we're gonna do is come down here and in the asset library, go for Godot pipe. You're gonna find the Godot pipeline right here as an asset that's available. Go ahead and install that one like so. And once that is in place, you're good to go. Let's create a new scene right here. Now we're gonna go back over here. So actually we're gonna need file manager like so, and grab our folder like this. Now we're gonna head back over to Blender and what you're gonna do is set up the export path. So here, just paste that in like that uh, and then we'll give it a name. So monkey.gltf and export for Godot. 
and I'm back over here, and then you're gonna notice the object is imported in Godot. So what you do now is go into your import settings for this, and part of the magic that was installed by the asset lib here is an animation, is an import script. So we're gonna go ahead, we'll import that guy in, go to your add-ons, under Godot pipeline, and you're gonna find this GLTF importer GD script. So we're gonna set that one and re-import. So now we've got the ability to bring this guy across. So here, let's create one in our scene, and boom. So there it is. So now when we do something over here, it will automatically update it over there. So you get a live reload. So here, let's do a material, define it like so, create blue. So there you can see, there is our object over here. So, so here, export to Godot, boom, blue over it goes. So what this gives is you like a live link between the two. Now there's a whole bunch more to this one uh, than I'm covering today. You've got things like post running scripts that can automatically synchronize things. But that's your entire idea here. It's basically setting things up to import and link across the two platforms. So what I could do now is sort of the same thing that we did before. We could override a name, we could add special data here. So you can see here, I could set a material, a shader that is gonna be assigned. So I could grab a TSCN shader on the side of Godot that will automatically be executed. I'm not gonna really cover that today. Specifically what I'm going to show you though, is the same thing that we saw before. I could set up a collision shape for it. So again, a box, a set collision with box shape like so, export over for Godot. And then boom, here you see, we have a box collider for our object. Come back over here, uh, switch that out and out again. And we do the same thing, a triangle mesh and make this a rigid body and set the collisions like that. Export for Godot and then head back over here. And now you're going to see we have the monkey uh, like so but we've also got a collision shape automatically being created. So this is doing the same work as the other one. It's automatically creating those collision shapes for you. You can actually do this using um, Godot uh, in general with a specific naming convention, uh, but this is kind of a, a faster live link. Again, everything you, you change over here. So if I come back here and say, all right, I would rather this guy be red, export, live link, boom, it immediately uploads. So that is kind of the gist of the pipeline hookup. Again, you attach the script to the object that you're linking back and forth, and then the data goes across. By the way, you can actually do um, additional data for the objects uh, that can be specified. You can also, again, run things like a script. So we got these various different options here. Uh, have. Uh, specific things happen, or I could define a material that will be applied on the Godot engine side of things when the export happens and just specify it here. So you've got these details that you can append across between your imports and exports that are available for you there. So uh, let's head on back over to our browser here. So it's just a very quick look at the three different things. Uh, again, give you a, just a live workflow between the two environments. Uh, this one actually has some kind of by communication stuff so that if you update something on the Blender side, it can be pulled back into the, um, the sorry, if you update something on the Godot side, you can have it pulled back into the Blender side and so on. Way beyond what I wanna cover today though. So I will show you where you can learn more there and a little bit of a tip on getting an update on this one. So that is Blender to Unity, Blender to Unreal and Blender to Godot 4. None of them really are changing much of Blender itself. They're just focusing on that workflow, on that FBX exporting process. And generally all of them give you this live update. So when you change something over here and export it, you're getting again, so stuff like yoink, and then boom, that is being preserved, updated and handled on the other side of things. And if you wanna deal with these uh, collision shapes, so you see here, we've got the, the collision shape around this guy, very simple to have it automatically create those meshes for you. Now, uh, no LOD generated here, but you can actually have it automatically. So Godot can automatically generate LODs on import anyways. So that functionality isn't specifically needed. You can actually set up, generate LODs like this and it'll automatically do it for you. So it's not really a needed material, but there's a lot more that this particular asset can do, this Blender to Godot 4 pipeline. Uh, and that is all available. So if you go on over to the website for this guy, you're gonna see he's got a playlist of all the updates and things that it can do and how to work with it. So if you're interested in learning more about how it works, uh, he does have full documentation on some of the more advanced things that you can do with this pipeline tool. Uh, but what you're gonna notice here is if you scroll on down here, uh, there is this comment, which for some reason I had to reload. You're gonna see here, two weeks ago, hi, uh, great, I think great, add-on, just got it in Blender Marcus Essential Game Modding Toolkit from Humble Bundle, just wondering, do we end up with updates or is this a snapshot to which the creator has replied, Hey there, DM me on Twitter at uh, underscore Michael Jared, and I can hook you up with the latest update for anyone who bought with Humble Bundle. So this is one of those ones. There are updates available 
through the creator himself, which is a very cool move. So if you want to learn more about how this particular asset works, just go check out his YouTube channel. He's done a ton of videos showcasing how it actually worked, how his workflow is set up and how he uses this in his own particular creation. Now, a lot of this stuff, again, you can do with out of the box Godot, uh, but this just kind of makes life easier to work with. Uh, so you can just go ahead, check this video out right there. It's probably as the starting point. And so these are much longer uh, than what I want to cover in this particular video. So if you want to learn more about how these things actually work. He does have a whole bunch of documentation there. There's a lot more to these than what I am showcasing here, but you get the gist of what it is all about. So once again, this is the um, Blender Markets Essential Game Modding Toolkit Bundle. This is the last thing I'm covering in it. So I already did a video on Retopo Flow, which by the way is an absolutely awesome program. A bunch of other very cool stuff in here as well. But what we looked at today specifically are Blender to Unity, Blender to Unreal, and Blender to Godot for Pipeline, all available in that first $10 tier. Uh, again, they're, they're more just like helpers to make your workflow better. But if you're going from the one system to the other over and over and over again, they may be very, very helpful, especially again, if you are doing multiple LODs and collisions and, and you want that kind of um, live reload functionality there, that's what they provide for you. So ladies and gentlemen, that is it. Uh, those three assets hands-on. Hopefully you found that useful. By the way, uh, my link does contain an affiliate code, enables you to uh, specify a portion of your purchase to help support Game from Scratch. And if you do that, thank you so very much. Hopefully you found this useful. Let me know what you think. Are you using any of these add-ons or do you find that they're just out of the box workflow works better for you? Let me know. Comments down below. I'll talk to you all later. Goodbye.